Hello, and welcome to the Algo 2021. In this talk, I'll go over the topic, independent AI research in Africa. What role for the diaspora? The main theme for this talk is that over the next 30 years, African countries can play a leading role in computational aspects of AI development. Given the condition of the academic institution in these countries, a lot of that research will happen outside of conventional academic confines. Finally, the diaspora, through its involvement, can accelerate this progress. To illustrate all of this point, let me share with you my personal story. I was born and raised in Côte d'Ivoire. My dad is an electrical engineer. My mom is a pharmacist. They both met in the 1970s when they were studying abroad through a scholarship program administered by the Ivorian government at the time that sent some of the most promising students of the country abroad to further their education. They both went back to their home to Abidjan and established a family and I was born in that setting. Fast forward to college, I was fortunate to be able to attend MIT for my undergraduate studies. There, I focused on computer science with an interest in math. It was during those years that the field of artificial intelligence also took off and caught my attention. This is a moment in my third year where, with some friends, we started organizing each other through a reading group to go over the latest advance in machine learning. The picture represents the very first meeting where, at the same time where this meeting was happening, AlphaGo was playing a match against Lissidor, and we actually read and discussed that paper. Fast forward to three years and a half after, the club boasted 500 members. It actually expanded to multiple schools in the Boston area, and the MIT News Office credit us for starting this movement. The article reads, the MIT machine intelligence community began with a few friends, meaning over pizza, to discuss landmark papers. Three years later, the undergraduate club boasts 500 members and active slide channel. Some of the stories not shared in this article is that many of the friends in this picture went on to so far achieve great things in the field of AI. Some of my friends in this group are co-authors of the GPT-3 paper and work at OpenAI. Other are research engineer at DeepMind. And I went on to become CTO for a startup and further work in the startup world. In 2017, through this reading and some of the projects I was able to do, I was fortunate to attend NURPS 2017. There, I presented my work at the Black in AI workshop. It was actually the first time that it was ever organized. And it was a gathering of black researchers in the field of AI from all over the world, be it from the African diaspora in Europe, young researchers in Nigeria, South Africa, black people in the US, others from Brazil. We all gathered and shared our work along with the obstacle we faced. I leave here a quote by Jan Lequin, who won the Turing Award, which is the Nobel Prize for Computer Science, one of the founding fathers of deep learning. He attended this event, and here is one of the quotes by what he had to say. The Black Knight Dinner was one of the most moving and rewarding events I've attended. Tim Nidgebru, Mustafa Sisi, and their co-organizer did a wonderful job putting this together, getting funding from sponsors to fly young researchers from all over the world. One participant from South Africa gave a very moving speech explaining how coming to NIPS, it was actually called NIPS at the time and then got renamed NERIPS for obvious reasons, and interacting with the global AI research community was a life-changing event for many participants. The movement is still going on, and actually I also got involved with it. One of the really interesting things that happened, it's a backdrop to that story, is that actually a lot of people had difficulties obtaining visa to attend this conference in the US and in Canada. 
And so moved by this challenge, the AI community wanted to organize one of their big gatherings, ICLR 2020 in Ethiopia, actually. And so I remember attending NERPS 2018 with some friends and we were like, oh my God. In May 2020, ICLR 2020 will be in Ethiopia. We have to be there. We have to work on a paper. And so that started our journey, working on research projects. The thing to note here is that the group I started was founded in March 2016. I graduated in June 2017, and the work I presented in Black and AI was actually work done in undergrad. And in December 2018, it was also not novel work done until then. So although I was a year and a half out of school, I hadn't done research in a long time. And so for us, and many of my friends in this picture, it would also be us starting the journey of actually working on novel research projects. The friends uh, include Pelkins Ajano, who was at the time an engineer at General Motors, Mohamed Koulibaly, who was studying math at Université Laval, and other friends involved include Ali Abdallah, who was an engineer at Tesla. In, at the beginning of 2019, when we were starting, we had no idea what we were doing. The challenge is that, you know, as you probably know, research is about finding novel ideas beyond what already exists. And so we had no idea which direction to go we really scrambled to find a research direction. We're just four brave soul, and we were like, okay, do we divide and concur, which means, you know, we'd have a team of two, and we try to find a research direction, discuss proposal, or do we all uh, form one big team, trying to push for one, one research project? There was no professor to guide us, and we also had no compute. It was a very difficult time. But in that time, we kept the discipline of meeting every two weeks, working outside on this, outside of our jobs on this research initiative. Fast forward to September 2019, we actually made a submission to ICLR 2020, which had a conference track uh, for September 2019. But actually, our two papers did get rejected. On the bright side, the discipline and the work that we had done was good enough to be accepted at, a 20, at two NURBS 2019 workshop. What we ended up doing was forming two teams of two and working on different ideas and meeting every two weeks to discuss, update, and also each uh, give each other feedback and collaborate. At NURBS 2019, Pelkins met back with one of his childhood friends. Because there, the Black and AI workshop was still taking place and flying researchers from all over the world. James came from Rwanda, where he was a master student. And I leave you the quote that Pelkin shared upon meeting James. Six years ago, we sat in the same classroom in Yaoundé. Today, we sit in the same conference room in Vancouver, representing Cameroon at international conference in Europe 2019. He then on and described some of the nights they spent studying linear algebra and, you know, trying to work on math proof. They had no idea at the time that this would lead to this. Because James went on to <clears throat> still be a student uh, while Pelkins moved to the U.S. and was able to transfer at MIT. James uh, stayed in Polytech Yaoundé, worked for a year, and then uh, enrolled in the African Master in Machine Intelligence in Rwanda. Through this program that's sponsored by Facebook, Google, and other big players, he was able to have an internship at Facebook AI Research in London in summer 2019. And he, that's one of the work that he presented at this conference. And so at that time, James was thinking a lot about how to improve the research environment in Polytech Yaoundé. And there, we this, through the momentum that we had obtained and the reward uh, of, of our discipline, we're also looking to expand. Because now, after a year of meeting regularly and having the discipline, we had actually a bit more research idea than we could handle. In addition to that, 
actually on the on the positive spin for the Isela 2020 story, I also worked with collaborators at MIT, uh, and we were actually able to make a submission to the ICLR AI for Earth Science Workshop. So we did get a paper at ICLR 2020. Unfortunately, one other thing that also happened is that the coronavirus pandemic started, as you all know, in February 2020, and the conference did not happen in Ethiopia. That said, at the, you know, powerful things were already in motion, and the African community understood that the AI world really were trying its best to be inclusive. And the virtual format also ended up being quite successful because it further connected in all of these wonderful talents from all over the world. So back to the Polytech Yaoundé episode. Uh, after presenting our initial research project and having a bit more ideas than we could handle, we decided to increase our group size. This was also possible because, as I mentioned, Ali, Perkins, and I were all engineers working in the US. And so with our earnings, we could allocate some of that to sponsor uh, internship projects. And so with the help of James, who, was, who had close contact with the students at Polytech Yaoundé, we sent a call for application. We received 29 applicants, 10 went to second stage interview, and we selected four people to be part of our original cohort of interns. One thing that stood out, and that I had already known because I was part of the Black, Black and I community, was that many students also went above and beyond their coursework and took online course in machine learning. Some had already started to complete a few projects, but they were also lost and as far as like taking their next step for moving from taking an online course to doing a research project. We went through a very similar process and we knew exactly where they were coming from because we ourselves had no compute, no prof, and no idea what we were doing despite having uh, talent and the drive to achieve. It. And so one good thing that happened also that summer is that one of our projects was able to be selected uh, to receive a grant by the Indaba uh, community. And this grant uh, was organized with uh, the Canadian, uh, Canada and the Swedish Development Center and the UNESCO AI Lab. And that's thanks to that that I was able to meet uh, the, uh, an entire community of young researchers from the African continent also doing amazing things. One of the outcomes of this grant is that the project that I worked on with Loic uh, and Ebenezer, who was also a friend from undergrad, uh, did get accepted uh, to present uh, at ICLR a uh, workshop on machine learning to prevent and combat pandemics. And one of our interns, um, Pascal Notao, um, after completing his internship in summer 2020, was able to get a full-time, I'm mean, sorry, a, um, an intern offer at Mila. And for those who don't know, Mila is the Morial Institute for Learning Algorithm, which has Yoshua Benjo, one of the founding fathers of deep learning, as a research director. And so in about a year, Pascal went from being an intern with us to working with some of the very best researchers in the world. Similarly, Loic um, also informed me that he was able to find an AI internship at IBM Research in Zurich and credit his experience working with us for three months as being key to have a successful interview. That said, all of our work did not happen without challenge. In many cases, some of the interns would casually inform us that they were not able to get work done because they were affected by power cuts. This is a picture from this week, showing that between April 23rd and April 25th, there'll be power cuts planned between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. This makes it really, really challenging. But in spite of this obstacle, we persisted because we believe that this can be done. And as one entrepreneur said, the obstacle is the way. It is by overcoming our biggest challenge that will you know, have Africa rise on the global stage. As far as future outlook, we had 
early and strong result that convinced us to double down on what we were doing. It started as a, an idea, as a joke for a side project, and now it has become a full-fledged research center. We have two years and a half of activity. 11 people involved overall uh, have been able to publish six research papers and receive eight grade in grant. Some of our already research work has collected around 25 citations. And the fun fact is now, in Politec Yaoundé, there is now an AI club as of the 2020-2021 academic school year. Some of our former interns have already given talks where they share their project and are eager to share their learning with the wider undergraduate community there. The future outlook on our side is that we are committed to doing this for at least the next 30 years. We know for us that this is an imperative for all of the young talent coming out of the African continent, for them to play a role on the global scientific stage. AI will create tr tremendous value over the next decades, and it will be too bad for Africa to miss out on this revolution. For us, we imagine a world in which 30 years from now, many of the breakthroughs and key prizes are won by research team from the African continent, either solving local problems or making theoretical breakthroughs that help the world move forward. We're internally working on our research roadmap, and we really want to be initially self-reliant. We value this independence, and this also challenges us to think about how to make this institution sustainable and gather the diaspora around this effort. I hope that by sharing more about my story, I gave you an overview of how the, the African diaspora can provide the capital and expertise required to fill some of the R&D funding gaps seen on the continent. I also hope that through sharing some of the anecdotes and the details, it highlight how thinking outside of the box of conventional top-down approach can allow us to leapfrog and invent new type of academic institutions. And I also hope to show the role that individual initiative and team effort, small team effort can play as they compound over time. Because this generation doesn't have time to wait for everything to be perfect. We need to act and organize in grassroots manner. And I hope that those stories inspire you to do the same. If you're not part of the African diaspora and you wonder how to be involved, I hope that those stories challenge you to think about who you think can do research, how you find talent, how you find collaborator. Thank you for listening and for contact, you can use this email. We open to collaboration with uh, partners and I hope that we'll be able to engage more on, on, uh, on, on, uh, on details of that story in the Q&A because there were a lot of detail uh, left out. Thank you and have a great day.